What is the meaning of life? What is the meaning of life? What do you think we're here to do? Uh, how do you think we got here? Why do you think you're here? That's the kind of question we're talking about at this time here on this station each day. What is the meaning of life? I mean, when you look up at the sky or you look out of the window of the car and you see the sun setting or you come out of your door this morning and you see the grass and you see the clouds or you're up in a plane and you see the earth spread underneath you or you're on vacation and you see the rivers and the mountain streams or you look up at the towering mass of a cliff. Have you ever thought, where does all this come from? I mean, the skyscrapers, I can tell who built them. The freeways, I can normally tell who made them. I can tell who made my bedroom furniture. But where did all this come from? Have you ever wondered about that? And of course, I think all of us have at some time. When we've wondered about the meaning of life, obviously we think there has to be a clue in everything that we see around us. And of course, we've been taught some responses that are supposed to satisfy us, and you know how we go about it. We answer one another, oh, well, well, no, uh, but I suppose uh, it all started with uh, this scum on this pond, and then what scum on what pond? Well, well, there was a pond, and there was scum formed on it. What pond? Where did the pond come from? Where did the scum come from? Oh, well, the scum came from the air contacting the pond. Well, where did the pond? Well, I don't know where the pond came from, but there was this pond, and there was this scum on it, and then there was this single-cell amoeba, uh, was somehow in existence and the scum of this pond. And what pond? How did the pond come into existence? I don't know how the pond came into existence. Uh, how did the scum? I don't know how the scum formed. How did this? I don't know how the single cell me. But, but, but that's the kind of way it happened. And Probably most of us have that vague kind of notion in the back of our mind that we kind of use to put our mind to sleep when we deal at all with the question where this whole thing came from. We kind of start with some kind of dream that we create of a pond and scum on it and single-cell amoeba and it doesn't make too much sense to us, but it seems to be what all the bright people are saying. And so we kind of go along with it because the whole question is too big and cosmic for us to think about anyway. And our poor old minds are worn out with thinking how to catch the next bus home. And so we decide, oh, I don't know how it came about. And yet it is pretty important, isn't it, when you think of it? I mean, it is pretty big, the earth. Uh, it is. I mean, it's pretty big. I mean, you you keep tripping over it, don't you? You you keep falling over it. You, you keep uh, finding grass under your feet and finding ground and soil under your feet. And you keep uh, seeing rocks and oceans and seas when you go on holiday and it kind of keeps barking against your shins, this miserable old world of ours. And it's rather persistent in the question that it brings to your mind, where did it all come from? And of course, some of us from our school days, 
engage in those absolutely illogical drifts of fantasy. We say, well, well, you see, uh, the atoms were all falling and they were kind of all falling in straight lines and then something caused two to collide and then, you know, it was a kind of snowball effect. All the other atoms then piled on top of that one and gradually they piled layer, layer and layer and layer and then they built to their, the size of the earth now and now I don't know why they keep on building. I don't know why the mountains don't keep on getting higher but I think that's the way it happened. And, of course, somebody says to us, well, I mean, who made the atoms, or what made the atoms, or how did the atoms come into being? Well, I don't know how they came into being. Uh, I'm just uh, positing a possible hypothesis. There is no real ground for it. There's no substantiation for it. But uh, it's what bright people seem to say these days that uh, you can't explain how the thing came into existence. We just suggest all kinds of vague possibilities. Well, in a way, I suppose it's reasonable to do it in the light of such a cosmic question, and yet you have to admit it is unreasonable to do it when you think that we don't treat the rest of life that way. If you go outside your door some morning and you find there a solid gold Cadillac sitting right at your front door, you don't just walk on and say, oh, it probably atoms were falling, one on top of the other, and then two of them crashed together and all the others built up and it snowballed into a solid gold Cadillac. You just don't say that kind of thing. You don't deal with ordinary everyday life in that illogical way, in that... Uh, a fantasy kind of hypothesis, theory. You don't. You just don't deal with life that way. And, of course, some of us say, well, uh, I mean, I don't know. I uh, maybe, maybe it all started from a decomposing substance. Maybe that's it. Well, all right, but where did the decomposing substance come from? I mean, what was it before it started to decompose? And uh, how did it decompose into this kind of uh, form that we see around us now? The fact is, you don't find that solid gold Cadillac outside your door and say, oh, it must have come from some decomposing substance. You don't. Anybody who hears you saying that uh, suggests you go straight to a psych ward or to a, 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 an asylum. And they say, look, that didn't come from a decomposing substance. And, of course, some of us uh, have been influenced by the latest theories uh, of astronomers. Uh, and we glibly say, well, well, I don't know where it came from. Maybe it came from an explosion. Maybe that's it. It came from an explosion. The whole Earth came from an explosion. And, of course, if you go to Ireland or you go to uh, Israel or you go to the Middle East or you go to Paris, everybody there will tell you in no uncertain terms that explosions do not create things like our Earth. They create destruction and chaos. And uh, they seem to destroy things. They don't seem to create things. And, of course, some of us say, yes, but this was a special kind of explosion. I mean, this Big Bang theory, you know, that uh, is obviously proved by the ever-expanding universe. Uh, this, this is how it all started. Uh, there was a Big Bang somewhere. And, of course, the obvious question is, uh, what exploded? What exploded? What caused the Big Bang? If there was a Big Bang, what made the Big Bang? And uh, what created the thing that made the Big Bang? Somehow or other, uh, a person has to deal in some same thoughtful way with the question, where did all this that we see around us come from? It's here. There must be some cause for it. 
And it's no use saying, well, I mean, maybe D caused it, and maybe C caused D, and B caused C, and A caused B. There's no point in saying, well, there's eternal regression of causes. What we're saying is there has to be a first cause. There has to be something that originally caused the beginning of things. Maybe you'd think a little more about that, and I'd like to try to go a little further with it, if you would, tomorrow. Thanks for listening.